So glad that you came tonight. Hey, our purpose tonight, not to perform for you at all, not to entertain you, but to worship together. And so the, how we got here is on Wednesday nights and Sundays, they just love to play and sing. And uh, on Sunday nights, we have Bible study at our house and they'll just stay and sing. We'll just get the guitars out. They'll just stay and sing. And we, Steph and I may be, we may stay downstairs watching TV and we'll hear songs coming throughout the house and they'll just stay and sing. And they do the same. They go to the Henson's and other houses and they just sing and, and worship together. And so on Wednesday nights, they lead and they sing the worship songs. And we've just been, uh, the adults are in there. We just, we're being led in worship by them. And it's what a blessing. I mean, that's really a blessing. And the thought was to say, we just, our church folks need to be led in worship too. Um, it's one thing um, to be led in worship. It's another thing to be led in worship by the next generation. And that's just something only God does. And uh, so tonight you'll hear, you'll have worship songs that we want you to join in and sing with. We have some students who are going to share their personal testimony, which I'm really excited about. Students are going to participate in praying and reading scripture, all for the goal of helping focus our hearts and minds towards the Lord. Amen. And to get us started off, Miss Riley and Luke, where are y'all? Y'all can come on up. Praise the Lord to sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let the let Israel be glad in His Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exalt in glory. Let them sing joy, sing for joy on their beds. Let us pray. Lord, we come together tonight to uh, worship you and praise you. Just help us come together and come closer. And just now pray. Amen. Calvary, 
Pay the price for all my guilty Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus Oh, He makes a way
Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand And everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's For those who love God, all things work together for God, and those who are called for those who are called according to His purpose. Romans eight twenty eight. Is it working? All right. I love that verse that Josiah just read because it really is the point of my life that I'm at now, where I've seen that no matter what happens, it's going to work. He's going to work it all together for good. I think there's been four main seasons of my life with how it relates to my walk with Jesus. I started my life like we all do. As a sinner, I was separated from God's love, 
And then I was dead in my sin, but I didn't stay there. In kindergarten, I accepted Jesus into my life, and I don't really remember much about the time without him, but the first time I accepted him was at Team Kids in one of the rooms upstairs at this church. Our teacher described our heart like a room that had one door. Only we can open the door from the inside. She said that Jesus was always waiting there, and you could either let him in or leave him out. He'll knock louder sometimes, and sometimes he's just waiting there, waiting for you to let him come in and take over your life and be in your heart with you. Uh, uh, that night after she shared just that analogy, I felt like he really did knock on the door to my heart. And I think my mom remembers it, that I just prayed that night for him to come in and take over my life and just be the ruler of my heart. And so we did, and I was baptized a few weeks later, and that was great. And then the next few years were very easy. Had a nice house. My dad was a pastor here. A lot of good things were happening. And then the second season of my life started. In fourth grade, that life that I had with a nice house and my dad being the pastor here came crumbling down. My dad admitted to being in an affair. So my parents got divorced. He moved out and uh, had to step down from me in the pasture here. You know, that was very hard. Very hard for me, very hard for everyone in my family, very hard for everyone in, every, in my church family. But to me personally, I lost my example of godliness, how I should walk. Because that was my dad for a very long time. He was this wonderful pastor who would get up here and share good things week after week. He started the D-Life program and started the outreach program. And I didn't know how this good person could give into temptation. And so I learned there that I couldn't put my faith in people who seem good. I could only put my faith in God who is always good. Um, this also devastated my mom. She lost a lot in a short time. Lost her husband, had a miscarriage, and she lost her brother. How she managed to get up and provide for me and my two siblings and Addie, who she was pregnant with, I don't know. Only through the strength of God, I guess. It wasn't without many sleepless nights and many, many tears. She got us through by getting us up to go to church and making us read a psalm each night before bed. If not for her, I don't think I'd be a believer right now. She really did save me. She really did save me. My favorite psalm, and I still remember it. I don't need to read it. I think I have it memorized, but I will. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lies me down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He renews my life. He leads me on the right path for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh -huh. That's such a great, such a great verse. Such a great psalm. I was... I was going through the valley. Um, my whole family was, and a lot of people from church were too. And just to know that God was there and that he was protecting us and we didn't have anything to fear because he had comforted us and was with us that whole time. That was really big to me. Um, um, I'm really glad that my first big trial in life and faith was with my mom because she really did show how you can suffer righteously, how you can deal with afflictions, trials, confusion, and even anger towards God. Because I know she was very confused and angry sometimes. And so I'm just so thankful for how she was an example and how she just led me through it and helped me stay on the right path. 
And that led to the fourth season of my life where I got to reap the rewards of steadfastness through those trials and see the good that he brought. Um, first, we were blessed by miraculous circumstances to have a, to have a home uh, that we can rent from Granny back there. Really appreciate it. Uh, just the circumstances that lined up and how people needed to buy and move into places all at one time can really only be described as a gift from God. Um, the second thing, I don't know if she's in here still, but we got gifted my beautiful little sister, who is about to turn six, which makes me feel really old. <laughs> I guess she's in childcare right now. And third, this one took the most waiting to see the fruits of, but a lot of good things happened in this church, um, even after he stepped down from me in the past year and left, and our worship minister left. We were blessed to have the yard bros and rights come and feel that emptiness left behind. Um, they are the godliest, and most humble families, and most servant families I know. And they've really helped me, even Noah. <laughs> yeah, but they really are. They show what it's like to be centered on worshiping God and to just how they've made it so centered on Christ and worshiping Him and going out and reaching out to people who don't know Him is really inspiring and is uh, is just a really great thing to have a church led by. And so I don't think Romans 8.28, all things work together for the good of those who believe in Him, I don't think it can be any more true. And if you need any proof, I think you can look at my life. Because I didn't think anything good could come out of my dad having to step down and leave and divorce my mom and, um, and just all those situations. I didn't think anything good could happen. But when I just had to place my faith in him, I really did see that it does work together for good. And I think his glory is the best thing that could have come from it, and that's all that we've received since then. So, just being able to glorify Him. We're about to sing a beautiful song about just whatever season of your life you're in. It's not you that has to be strong enough to make it through. Um, it's Christ through you. And so I just want us to praise Him wholeheartedly and sing, not because we sing, but because He has empowered us and He is lifting us up and we can have power through Christ. Um, I'm going to get Jack to pray us out, and then we're going to go and sing this beautiful song. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for allowing us to be here. I thank you for gathering everyone here tonight. Father God, I thank you for Cooper and his um, powerful, powerful testimony, Lord. Um, I don't know what I'd do without him. I don't know what I would do without my family, but I only know that they're here with me because of you, Lord. And I thank you for my faith family for that as well, Lord. Father, I pray that the songs that we sing tonight, Lord, that they just glorify you, Lord, that we're not up here for our glory, but yours only. I pray that your name be lifted high above ours always and forever, Lord. And I pray that with each and every day that we live our lives, Lord, that we live our lives for you and that we live for you and not ourselves. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. What gifts of grace is Jesus mine?
him what i am doing you do not understand now but afterward you will understand john 13 7. is it working now yeah there we go so that verse chloe just read is a big testament of what I'm about to read and how I try to go through my life now, that no matter what we're struggling through, God has the answers to it all. We may not understand it in the midst of everything, but he's got a plan for everything. So my name is Abby Blunt, and I'm a senior at Glencoe High School. I've grown up in church since the time I was born, and my parents have taken me to church as much as they could. 
pretty much as long as I can remember, I've grown up on in Wednesday and Saturday, Wednesday and Sunday nights. Since I was five years old, I knew I needed Jesus in my life, and I've been a Christian ever since then. There's been numerous ups and downs along the way, and I've been nowhere near perfect, but God has done some pretty awesome things in my life. He, one thing God has taught me the most is that He is a plan and a purpose for every detail of our lives. We may not understand what He's doing in the midst of it all, but it's always for His glory and to benefit us. I've been a Christian most of my life, and as much as I would love to say that me and God have always been super close, that's not the case. Although I don't have any crazy stories of me doing terrible things, I've had many instances where I've doubted Him, not trusted Him, pushed Him to the side, and strayed away from Him even when I needed Him the most. A big turning point in my life and in my relationship with God happened about two years ago. He brought so many things to my attention that I wasn't doing right and that I needed to fix. He gave me a new outlook on life and how to take value in things and not take them for granted, and how much I was desperately overlooking mine and his relationship. As some of you may know, softball is a pretty big part of my life and has been ever since I was four years old. I've spent countless hours indoors, on the field, and even in my backyard trying to improve my abilities to be the best that I can be. I've always had the dream to play in college, and I got to make that dream come true by God's grace. But two years ago, not only did I not know if I was ever going to get to play in college, I never knew if I was going to be able to throw a softball again. It was my sophomore year in high school, and we were playing an area game at home, which is a pretty important game. It was very intense, and all of our fans were going crazy, and the umpires, as we all know, were doing so good at their job. Yeah, that's not the case at all. Um, anyways, I'm very competitive in this situation. I felt like I had to do everything for us to win. I was on first base and a ball got popped up to right field and I tagged up and attempted to dive first into second base. Although I, I was safe, that didn't end up too well. Instantly, I knew something was very wrong. I laid face down on the ground until our athletic trainer came out there to me and rolled me over. But to be honest, after that, everything was pretty much a blur and needless to say, I did not go back into the game. I dislocated my shoulder and tore my labrum and my throwing arm, and I had to have major surgery. My first thoughts were, I'm never going to play in college, and what am I going to do now? God, why would you let this happen to me? Of course, doubt. Everything I had worked towards since I was four years old felt like it had all gone down the drain. While this interrupted me playing softball, it also messed up my everyday task. I couldn't raise my arm above my head. I couldn't make myself food. I couldn't drive myself to places I needed to go. Also, this happened at the worst time possible during the biggest part of my recruiting process. For softball, colleges can start recruiting at September of your junior year. This happened in April of my sophomore year, which meant I had five months before the moment I had been waiting for pretty much most of my life had come and my plan was shaken up and I was nowhere near where I had hoped for it to be. Something that consumed my life and really consumed me in general was taken away from me when I felt like I needed it the most. I felt lost and stuck and hopeless and quite honestly, worthless. I had never felt these things before in my life and I had no idea how to act. Of course, my first reaction was to freak out because I'm human. The night everything happened, I was so overwhelmed. I remember sitting in my bathroom floor sobbing thinking, I don't want to talk to God right now, but I need to. Eventually, I worked myself up to start pr praying. But to, get, to begin with, I wasn't very nice. I kept asking God things like, God, why would you let this happen to me now? Why now would you do this to me? Don't you know it's at stake soon? My whole life has been a waste of time. After I had calmed down, I kind of just sat there for a second and I could hear God telling me, everything I do happens for a reason. This was no mistake. I instantly had a sense of peace come over me, and I started asking God to help me trust Him, to give me peace, and to walk beside me through this whole process. Little did I know this was just the beginning of a lengthy and difficult journey. There were days I wanted to give up. I thought I would never get back to where I was, but God helped me to stay positive and optimistic. In December of my junior year, I made my dream come true, and committed to play D1 softball at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. 
For the first time I met my coaches, I knew that that's where I wanted to go. They believed in me when many didn't and cared about me beyond the softball field. I remember when I was on my visit, the head coach told me to pray about my decision and go where God was leading me. In that moment, I knew God had placed me exactly where I needed to be. Through this journey, God helped me understand things I would have never understood. Although he had a different route in mind for my life, I would not go back and change it if I could. I feel like our relationship is better because of it. I've grown as a person because of it, and I know that my worth only comes from him. I realized that if I was never able to play softball again, I would be just fine because God had something better for me in mind. I feel like I have a deeper appreciation for my sports since God has allowed me to play again, and I want to use my talents as a way to give glory to Him and influence others. There are several things I learned from my experience that the Bible talks about. In Jeremiah 29 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan and a purpose for everything. We may not understand what He's doing or why, but it's always to benefit us. And as Cooper said earlier, Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. We often have our lives mapped out in our heads of what we want to do and how we want to do it. But God always has bigger and better plans for our lives. Even when we may not realize it in the moment, he's always setting us up for something better. And in Titus 3, 5, he saved us not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of Holy Spirit. Our worth comes from Christ and Him only. Sports don't define us. Our jobs don't define us. Only Jesus does. You are more than a number or a stat. You are valued in many ways that you don't even see in yourself. Isaiah 4:31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Our strength comes from God. Our talents and abilities come from Him and can be taken away in a split second. Be grateful for the things and the opportunity God blesses you with. I leave you with this. We often try to plan our lives for what we think is best when in reality God is in control. He has a purpose for what He does in our lives, whether it's the highs or the lows. Our lives are in God's hands and we should trust that He will take care of us. We are here on earth and have, alter- have eternal life because of Jesus Christ. We are not defined by our works or how we perform, good or bad. Nothing you can do on this earth gets you into heaven, only by believing Jesus is the Son of God and came to earth to die on the cross for His people. We never know when many lasts may occur in our lives, such as the last time we play a sport, the last time we get to see a loved one, or even the last time it's our time on earth. So it is very crucial that we don't let the things of this world consume us, but rather live in the light of God. I'm going to let Amelia pray. Dear God, thank you for letting us gather together to worship you. Please help us learn to trust you even when we don't know what your plan is for our life. Help us know that all things work for your glory and our good when we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to I traveled on it was Jesus when the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found oh I could see it then but I can see it
sit for a second man whoo i enjoyed that i don't know about y'all did you enjoy that so i'll take just a second because this has been on my mind that song starts with a thousand generations and it talks about singing the song forever to the lamb and i think of the psalm that says one generation will proclaim your works to another we witnessed that tonight. Man, you couldn't have said it better. Um, Abby and Cooper, wow. And just, uh, just y'all are proclaiming the glory of God, and you're doing it faithfully, and you're doing it authentically, and the Lord is glorified in it. We're really blessed. I'm r- really blessed. Um, and that's, that's what we're all supposed to do. What's so good about all this is it's the glory of God, is it? It's the middle of it. And um, bear with me, because Amelia's been picking on me because I've been so infatuated with the cicadas lately. <laughs> uh, it's a special year because there's like seven different kinds. And it's, this is, the last time this happened was 200 years ago, but they all came out at the same time. And that's why it's so much louder and all this. But they come out, they have to get out of that shell and usually see the empty shell, right? And then they do whatever it is they do, and they're just singing like crazy. And it, how many of you even knew what it was when you heard the sound? I didn't know what it was. I, I was like, it's, it sounds like something's going on over there. The city's working on something. You know, and then it finally dawned on me, this is the cicadas, and they're so loud. And it's just as soon as daylight comes, it's just steady, and it's just like all they do. And you see them swarm, and then I just see them lying dead all over the place. It's like they're, and most of them are in the ground either 17 years, 13 years. It's, it's something like that, that whatever it is, the eggs get planted. And it's 13, 15, or 17 years before they ever do anything. And then they come out. And then what's the thing that stands out to us? They just sing. Whatever it is, they just sing. And I thought, as I was, that song we were just singing, and this is tonight, I'm just thinking, God is, well, our duty as the older generation is to tell the younger generation so that they can do the same thing and sing the glory of God and proclaim the glory of God. It's the same song for generations and generations and generations. That's the one task. That's all it is, is to proclaim the glory of God. And when you're done, you die and you get to enjoy Jesus. That's it. So come out of your shell and let's sing like these students have represented tonight. There's some of you, you've been living in your shell. You came out of the ground and you're just staying in your shell. 
Get out of your shell and let's sing the song. Sing the name of Jesus. Proclaim Jesus with your life. Whether you're playing softball, whether you're working as a judge or you're a preacher or whatever you are, your, your duty for the sake of Jesus is to proclaim his name. And that's it. Sing the song. And when it's done, we're all going to be together. We're going to keep singing it because he's worthy of an eternity of praise. Man, I've been so blessed. If you've been blessed, I, this wasn't our whole purpose, but um, if the Lord leads you, we weren't, my life was changed at camp. Okay, that's when I fell in love with worship music and I came on from camp just trying to learn those songs. And the reason I'm here today leading worship is because God got a hold of me at camp and he started turning me towards music and worship because I wanted to just sing those songs for, that I had at camp when I encountered Jesus. And so I, camp can be an awesome experience. Um, don't feel pressured at all. But if you feel led, if the Lord puts it on your heart, they're going to put a little QR code up on the screen. You can just take a picture with your, put your camera up there. It'll take you to a website and you can give directly to our summer camp. Um, or you can put it in the offering box as you walk out. They're emptied from Sunday morning offerings already out of there. So you can just put an offering in there. Or if later you feel led to do that, I would encourage you to do that. Because what you get, teenagers matter. And it, it takes money to, to, to send them to camp and to do ministry. But God uses it. And you're seeing fruit of it tonight. So I want to encourage you to do that and give sacrificially as the Lord leads you. I'm going to pray and I, I want them to sing another song. Would y'all be cool with that? And I think we all would vote that they ought to sing, There Was Jesus. Or not. Was that, is that the one we would do? Is that how you say it? There Was Jesus? That song gets me. All right, let me pray and they're going to sing. Father, thank you so much for tonight. What a blessing. Um, Lord, it's your grace that draws us to you. It's your grace that fills our heart with song and praise. And, and it's a blessing to see others honor you and sing to you and speak and proclaim the work you've done in their life. And what a blessing tonight. And my prayer is that you are glorified and pleased tonight. And uh, we've all been blessed. And Lord, I pray that you would take this and let it, let it be a seed. And for us older folks, may it challenge us. There's a reason why Jesus came and got a hold of teenagers to be his disciples. Teenagers set an example. And I pray you help us um, to see what we've seen tonight and let it challenge us um, to give more and to be more surrendered to you and to sing louder with our life for you. Lord, thank you for tonight. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing this. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I've traveled it was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I could see you there but I could see it now It was Jesus I'm not 
Santa fixou até cá.